Welcome to another episode of Water and Ice Outdoors. Thank you guys for being here. It's the end of October, and I gotta say, if you're here in Minnesota or anywhere in the upper Midwest, it's starting to feel like ice fishing season. And you can't see it, but right behind you guys in my camera, there's snow on the ground. We got about three to four inches of snow about a week ago, and it's still here. It's about 30 degrees. I don't know if you can see on camera, but you can, you can see my breath right now. So ice fishing is coming. People are jacked up in my area. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about ice fishing safety and with COVID and how it has absolutely blown up the fishing world. There is an incredible amount of new fishermen out there. I only imagine it happening the same way with ice fishing this year. I think it's going to be incredibly busy out there. I think there's going to be a lot of new people out there. So if you're not one of those new people, you probably already know plenty about ice safety. Uh, but this video is de designed for the new people out there and that may might be their first time out on the ice or are just novice uh, ice anglers. These tips may save your life, honestly. Um, luckily, knock on wood, I have never gone through the ice. Uh, I have friends that have. Uh, luckily, they were able to get themselves out um, in part due to tips that I'm gonna be sharing with you. So do not take these lightly. It's a very serious thing. People die ice fishing every year and typically it's preventable. So pay close attention to these tips if you're a novice. If you are an experienced angler, maybe it's just a little refresher for you, but I'm gonna get into them right now. The first thing you need to know when you go out on the ice is what is safe ice. Uh, thickness, color, texture, there's all sorts of tips that can clue you off to dangerous ice or safe ice. Now typically you want nice clear glass ice. That is the strongest. When you start getting into the cloudy ice or the white ice, it starts to get a little less safe. Uh, that does not mean it's unsafe, but typically you want that nice, clear, dark ice. Um, I'm going to throw up a little artist rendering here that the DNR puts out every year showing ice thickness. Now, as you can see, the first thing you see is about three to four inches of ice for walking. Now that's human body weight and basically what you can carry. So uh, typically I like to start when it's about four inches of ice. I don't like to chance it because the thing that you have to realize is that you could be on four inches of ice, but that next step that you take could be on one or two inches of ice. Ice doesn't always grow evenly across the lake, especially um, over deeper water, it tends to grow slower. Um, so on the shallow areas, I mean, common sense will tell you the shallower areas will have more ice many times than the deeper area just because it forms from the shore out. So that being said, early ice, when you're walking out on the ice, you need to invest in this. This is called a spud bar. And what you do is every few steps, you take this, it's a big heavy steel, uh, pole with a big chisel on it and every few steps you take you want to jam this into the ice and typically if it makes it through in one shot you need to back up slowly because you're on unsafe ice if it takes two or three good shots to punch through that ice typically as a rule of thumb it's pretty safe ice always be cautious still but every few steps you want to bang this into the ice and make sure that it doesn't go through. Also things to remember when you're in shallow ice, ice that is growing around cattails or um, emergent weeds is always going to be less strong than just your regular open water ice. Uh, it compromises the strength of the ice when those reeds and the cattails shoot through there. Obviously it creates holes in the ice. So another thing is do not walk through cattails or emergent vegetation that's going through ice because it's not as safe. All right, let's go back to that picture. And the next, uh, the next group on there is snowmobiles and ATVs. Uh, typically they say, I believe it's like six to 10 inches of ice um, or anywhere over six inches of ice. Again, I like to stay on the safe side of these. As I said earlier, you just don't know when you're gonna get onto that thinner sheet of ice uh, that even could be just a few feet away from where you're standing currently. So um, 
I usually wait till about seven or eight inches to get my snowmobile out there. And uh, I usually also try not to be the first one on the lake when I'm out there, just so I know that somebody else has gone across it okay. And I'm hopefully not gonna run into any problems. The next, the next one is vehicles. Small trucks and uh, sedans are, I still like to say 12 inches. Um, that foot mark is where I feel safe driving. And even sometimes more than that, I drive an Explorer and I typically wait till I see, you know, big pickup trucks on there or half tons out there going safely across the ice. And even then, I do not like running all the way across lakes. I go to the access that's closest to where I'm going and I drive straight out to there and straight to my spot. And another thing you want to do when you're driving a vehicle on the ice do not go over 10 or 15 miles an hour. I know it seems like it's taken forever to get across that lake, but when you start going faster than 10 or 15 miles an hour, you start creating vibration from going over those bumps, and if you hit ice holes or ruts or anything like that, you're creating vibration and bouncing that ice, and that has the potential to compromise the ice and crack it and damage it, and that's when you start seeing uh, bad things happen. All right, so that's going to do it for the illustration. The next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, where not to go on the ice. And we kind of mentioned it with the cattails and the emergent vegetation. Don't walk through those. The ice is compromised. Other places are com common sense. Other places are not. Um, one of the common sense ones, any place with current. Um, if you know the lake that you're on has some certain sections that have some current, do not go on there or be especially careful because that ice is going to be thinner than the other ice. Now, other places, channels, thin, narrow channels, under bridges, all those places have the potential for unsafe ice. So do not go under there or be careful there. Okay, now next goes hand in hand with the ice. Now, when you're out on early ice, which I know it's something all of us love to do, but that's when you need to be especially careful. You need to have what's around my neck here, and these are ice picks. Now, these are the Frable brand. Um, every, everybody makes these out there. I like these because they have retractable spikes. Um, I just like them because I don't get them caught on things, and, and I just like the way they work. Um, I see so many people out there with their spikes but they have them you know, in their sled of their shack or uh, in their pocket on their bibs. When you're out on the ice, early ice, or when the ice is less than six inches, you need to have these around your neck. Because if you fall in and you have them in your pocket or you have them in your sled, they're not doing you any good have them around your neck because when you fall in, boom, you got them right there, you can grab them. And all you're doing is swimming to the edge of the ice and you're picking at the ice, picking at the ice. And you grab, you pick at the ice and pull. And what you're trying to do is you're at the edge of the ice and you're picking, picking and trying to lift yourself up out of the water with these because if you don't have these picks, it's ice. You're just gonna be grabbing and slipping and slipping and you're never gonna get out. So make sure you have these picks because you won't get out without them. That brings me to the next one, float suits. I know they're expensive, I know they're big and bulky, but these things can honestly save your life. I personally like the ice armor from Clam. This is the ascent suit, these are the bibs, this is the jacket. They come in a few different color schemes as well. I'm on the Clam Pro staff, but I love the way this suit fits, I love the way it's breathable, and I love how agile I still am. It does not inhibit you at all. You can still get up and down extremely easy, and this has float technology in it, so if you do fall through the ice, it will keep you on the surface. Um, every other brand pretty much makes it, Stryker, Fraybill, Eskimo, they're all making float suits now. It's a great thing. It could save your life. It's expensive, I know. This suit costs close to $400, if not more. Same with the other ones, but your life's worth that much money. Uh, will it you know, 
throw you back out of the water and onto the ice? No. But it's going to give you that extra time to, to gather yourself and to get yourself out and back on the ice. Next thing, ice cleats. These are the Yak Track series. Um, they fit over your boots. I don't have my boots on, but they fit over your boots and just give you extra traction. You can see there, they give you extra traction on the ice. Obviously, ice is slippery. So I've taken spills on the ice when I haven't been wearing my Yak Tracks. I know probably most of us have. It does not feel good. And you can even knock yourself out on the ice or break an arm, break an elbow, break shoulders. I've seen it happen. Wearing these cleats can eliminate that. So they're 20, 30 bucks. You can even find some cheaper than that. Um, but they make an extreme difference in walking and moving around on the ice. All right, guys, that brings me to my last thing. And this is perhaps the most important one, your cell phone. I know we don't go anywhere without our cell phones these days, and many of you probably go out, myself included, go out fishing to escape some of the real world, but you need to have your cell phone with you in case of an emergency, and you need to have something waterproof to carry it in. I know some of the phones these days are waterproof, but if you get your phone wet, you fall in, and you can't call anybody because it's dead, it doesn't do you any good. There's many bags out there, even Ziploc bags you can put them in, um, that will keep them dry. So bring your cell phone, and there's a few different reasons for that. One of my favorite tips, too, is to bring a buddy. But if you don't, make sure you have your cell phone so you can call somebody if something happens. And let your loved one or who you live with or a buddy know where you're going that day fishing in case something happens and you don't come home when you say you were going to they can call the authorities or the correct people to start getting people out there to look for you so cell phone extremely important for that reason and also so many phones these days have gps on them and with the navionics app and now hummingbird plus i think it's called you can have lake maps right at your fingertips and the reason this is a safety thing is because if you get lost on the ice or you're fishing at night and you can't find your way off you can pop these GPS maps up and they'll direct you right to the public launches so that's another reason to have your cell phone with you and have it charged and fully on and just ready to go whenever you need it and the last thing rope bring at least a 50 foot section of rope because you never know if you're going to fall in. You can have it either in your shed or around your waist or on your shoulder. If you fall in and somebody's near you, you can throw that rope to them and they can pull you out. Or you can say, hey, I've got some rope in my shack. Go run and grab it and toss it to me and they can pull you out. Just one more added safety measure that you can take. I hope this really helped you out and I hope some of you learned some things. For those wily veterans out there that you guys hear this every year for the whole time you've been ice fishing your whole life, maybe it's a good refresher for you. I know sometimes I'm a little lax on this stuff, so it's a good refresher for me also. Uh, but for you guys that are new, that it's going to be your first time out on the ice this year, please take these tips seriously. Go out and get this safety equipment because it could save your life. I hope you guys have a great ice season. I hope you guys get on a ton of great bites. I'll be out there as well. We're going to be doing some awesome ice fishing videos as always. So we'll see you out there on the ice. Stay safe and have a great ice season.